Over a few days ago, I was down at my local Audi and I stumbled across a monitor that was 27 inches, 144 hertz, 1440p. And the best thing is it was a PLS panel. And now a PLS panel is similar to IPS. It's just basically Samsung's version of IPS. So it's going to be better for colors and viewing angles than a VA panel, for example, which uh, for this price, it was 380 Aussie dollars. And in USD terms, that's about 260 US dollars. Now, around this price range, at least in Australia, you're only going to be finding either VA or TN panels in this kind of monitor, where the cheapest IPS 144 hertz panel I could find was the Acer, and that's coming in around 600 Aussie dollars. So a lot more expensive than this, but the funny thing is it's from a brand called Medion. And now when I was recently over in Korea, I noticed this brand name for a lot of the monitors that were there and they were offering really good value for money. So let's quickly now check out what you get in the box, the build quality, as well as run a 1000 FPS camera on this monitor. To see how good the input latency is, as well as the response times, which for me personally are two of the biggest things I look for when I'm choosing a gaming monitor. So unboxing this unit right here, I was surprised that they've got an actual Audi warranty certificate within the box. So that means that Medion is collaborating with Audi. And so we've got a one year warranty on this unit. They've also included an HDMI cable. So one thing about this cable is if you're gonna use it, you're gonna need an HDMI 2.0 out port on your graphics card in order to power this monitor properly. Another thing is too, you get a plastic and aluminum sort of hybrid stand, as well as the same for the backing of the monitor, power cable, and your FSP power brick, which FSP, they are known for making good uh, server rated power supplies too. So can't go wrong there. I just got to quickly pause while I was unboxing this thing and setting it up. I have never seen a static charge like that. I hopefully got it on camera. I left, definitely got the noise on camera where it was this little lightning bolt going from here to the monitor. I hope the monitor's not, not gone, but we'll test it out soon. So after that lightning bolt hit this monitor, that wasn't enough to knock it out, or should I say that wasn't enough to erase this monitor. But that aside, let's finally get onto all the important testing with this panel right here. Also quickly, in relation to the build quality, it doesn't have any height, swivel, or tilt adjustment, but there's no shaky bits on it. It's actually a very solid unit for what it is. So it's now the next day. I gotta get my composure back because this is now the next day and I spent all last night playing games on this thing and testing it out with all the objective numbers. And I've gotta say that this is easily the best monitor that I've seen in my life in terms of value for money. And we're gonna go through that right now. Let's look at, first of all, the input lag. The best frame that I got here was six milliseconds total input latency of the system. This is the best I've seen here on the channel. The worst frame it put out was 15 milliseconds, which gave it 
an average of 11 milliseconds. Uh, we'll go on to the mediocre point on this monitor and that is the response times. Without anything turned on, that's overdrive and the other feature and we'll get on to that soon. We had eight to nine milliseconds, which is mediocre. It's not the best I've seen, but it's far from the worst I've seen and definitely beats a lot of VA panels coming in this price range. But when we turned on the overdrive feature, we then dropped the response times down to six to seven milliseconds and there was no artifacting and better yet, we then got to enable G-Sync on this monitor, which worked perfectly. And you can also enable FreeSync if you've got an AMD graphics card. So that is coming in at that level right there, where the colors as well from this PLS panel are absolutely gorgeous and the viewing angles are really good too. And then we move on to the brightness settings. This uh, set on the box 250 CCD, I measured up to 345 roughly. Uh, with the worst part of the monitor being 290. So white uniformity was decent. Backlight bleed, there was virtually none. So that was really good for the monitor too. And then we had cross hatching, which wasn't visible either. And this monitor does have a semi-matte coating. It's not too hard. So the colors will come through a little bit better than a full matte coating on a monitor. But then moving on to the colors out of this monitor, out of the box, they come a little bit saturated. They give you that great look for gaming, but if you wanna use it for photo editing or video editing and you need color accurate monitor, this is not going to be it, where it's got a bluish tone to it and it's also got the colors that are a little bit saturated out of the box. But now here's where this monitor gets even better because as we said before, the build quality felt decent, but we've also got DVI in, display port in, and HDMI in. Now, the HDMI will work with 144 hertz, but if you do wanna get G-Sync or FreeSync working, then I do recommend using a display port cable, which is what I had to use to get those technologies to work. And unfortunately, it doesn't come included with a display port cable. But here's the weird thing about the Eraser from Medion from Audi, is that I can't find this monitor for sale anywhere online, eBay, Amazon, or anything like that. And I also checked out his website and that's pretty much just like, hey, we've got stock in our stores. And also if you guys didn't know, Audi's called like Hoffer in Austria. But continuing on with this monitor, it had another mode inside called MPTR. And I didn't know what this meant and I tried Googling it, I asked on Twitter what exactly this means. One viewer came up with an answer that did seem about right considering what this tech was doing. And when we turned it on, it was so weird. It did drop the brightness. The visible brightness dropped by about half. But when we looked at the 1000 FPS camera, we could see that there was basically five milliseconds of red being displayed for every frame and then two milliseconds of your normal frame. And essentially this is working like ultra low motion blur, but in a much different way where we're getting a red screen coming out as opposed to the actual strobing lights just turning off. And I found this very interesting for a few reasons. And one being, of course, it's going to drop the perceived uh, response times of the monitor to that of around two milliseconds. But secondly, it did raise the input lag. And also with this tech turned on, you can't enable things like FreeSync and G-Sync. But when all is said and done, Audi's 27 inch 1440p 144 Hertz PLS monitor is the best value for money I have ever seen. A monitor with an IPS panel on it, like the Aces in Australia, come around $600 Aussie dollars. That's $220 Aussie dollars more than this unit right here. Not to mention the input lags extremely low. The response times are very decent. You've got those three options for display ins, and also you've got a D-pad on the back for operating the OSD. So they haven't cheaped out on anything when it comes to the basic core principles of this monitor. Better yet, you've also got a left and right speaker on the back, which actually does a decent job of positioning if you can't afford to go out and buy a headset or something like that. Though do keep in mind it is monitor speakers. They're not gonna be exactly playing your R&B music with any bass. Though breaking it down with the Audi monitor, what we've got here is something that has good build quality. It performs extremely well. And I'm really disappointed because if I knew this was this good, I would have bought another two of these units from my local Audi to set up a surround display. 
And that's the funny thing. I don't know where you can get this monitor from in terms of uh, selling it over the internet or people overseas and stuff like that. And another thing is too, I'm gonna have no affiliate link for this. So recommending a product like this, I'm gonna get absolutely no kickback because I didn't even know where it's sold. But also when it comes down to it, this monitor has really excited me in that we've got a new player in town and that's Medion. And if their monitors come for sale mass in stock at retailers, for example, I'm definitely gonna be buying more of their monitors and seeing what they can offer the average person because it's good to have a new player in town as opposed to Acer, Zeus, LG, BenQ and all these other players that dominate the market. But what we've seen with this monitor is that there is a new segment for value for money and this just breaks through that barrier and doesn't just break through it a little bit, it just punches right through it without having any competition left. But anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button for us. This one really excited me because it reminds me of when those Korean monitors first came on eBay and they just broke through that value for money barrier and you're getting things like these IPS uh, Apple monitor displays with glass panels for like a fourth or a fifth of the price of what Apple were charging for them. This monitor right here just brings back those good memories and is just honestly a gorgeous experience to play on. The colors, the viewing angles, the response times, the input lag, it's just a phenomenal monitor. And with that said, we'll move on to the question of the day which comes from Tim Tweejutsu, and he asks, is the Spectre Meltdown patch for all PCs? And it's a really good question because I did test it in the past and I found that it really only makes a difference on the older Intel CPUs. So if you have an AMD CPU, especially the new Ryzen CPUs, then I wouldn't be applying this patch at all to those CPUs because the before and after differences didn't make pretty much any difference at all. But if you've got an older Intel CPU, say for instance, a Sandy Bridge i7-2600K, then I found the performance uplift can be to the tune of around 10% if you're CPU bound, but furthermore, it helps out a lot with the stuttering. But with that said, you are opening your computer up to these vulnerabilities that they were patched to protect against. I just feel personally as an individual user, you don't have much to worry about because apparently they're more local based attacks where someone has to be on your actual network and have access to your computer, either via virtual host or actual direct access on your PC, which doesn't happen to me or any of my friends' PCs. Anyway, guys, I'll catch you in the next one. And if you've made it this far and you're not subbed, then you may wish to consider subbing and ringing that bell if you want to see the content the moment it drops. And I'll see you next time. Peace out for now. Bye.